Praise the Lord. Prayerful greetings to everyone who listens God's promising and eternal word. Dear sisters and brothers, today let's reflect together how we do commit sin, our, sin in our life. Very interesting questions. Normally we do sin. We do commit sin in our life. Yes or no? If we do, and now maybe coming five minutes of reflection, we'll try to see the beautiful four levels how we commit sin in our day-to-day -day life. So let us get into the board and read the main part. Letter of James, chapter 1, verse 13, 14, 15, 16. I repeat, letter of James, chapter 1, verse 13, 14, 15, 16. Now listen. No one when tempted should say, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lewd and enticed by it. Then, when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So, dear loving friends, let's try to reflect this particular passage. Four levels that we commit sin in our life. First, evil desires. Second, temptations. And third, action of sin. And fourth, the result of sin is spiritual death. So, now listen what I'm trying to say to you or trying to explain with you together. Normally, when we commit sin, we say, oh, I did a sin. And we are so sad. So sad. And I'm unhappy. Why? Because I remember the other day, one guy came to me and said, Father, when I commit sin, I'm sad. I asked him, what about when you go for confession? He said, Father, when I go to the confession, absolutely I come, why, come back with grace. So, what I'm trying to say, when we commit sin, we are sad. And when we go for confession, we are happy. What's happening with us? That's what I'm trying to deal. And we are very worried about our sin, which is not important. I will tell you, where you need to worry. It's not about your sin. Now, brothers and sisters, the most dangerous part connected with the sin is not the action of sin, but it is the evil desire that we keep and entertain in our hearts. Yes or no? Who can tempt you? Tell me. You give me an answer. God said in the word, God never tempts anyone. Temptation is not from God. Then from where? Who is tempting us? I receive temptation from my own evil desires in my heart. So temptation is not from out. Temptation is not from my friend. Temptation is not from a third party. Or temptation is not from God. But... We receive temptations because of the evil desires in our hearts. So, dear loving brothers and sisters, I want you to keep in mind the most important part connected with your sin is not temptation, not the action of sin, but the evil desire which we keep and entertain in our hearts. So that's the first thing. And second, it is because, why I, why I have temptations? I have temptations because of that evil desire in my heart. And the, and the result of the temptation? 
action of sin. You sin is only a wrong action. Sin is only a disobedience, a wrong action. That action for one minute, one hour, two minutes. Sin is only a wrong action. But we have to be careful. We have to be aware. We have to be vigilant. Not about our action of sin, but we have to be really vigilant about the evil desire that we keep in our hearts that destroys our life. And at the end, when you commit the action of sin, there is a spiritual death. You are sad. You are confused. You are depressed. Slowly, that physical, uh, slowly, that helps you or in a way puts you to have uh, physical uh, health issues in your life. Some of that's why Jesus said, some of us are sad due to the wrongdoings of your life. So, dear loving sisters and brothers, I want you to be very uh, sincere and frank, connected with the sin. Sometimes we hear, oh, Father, I have a lot of temptations. Temptations from here, from there, from that corner, this corner. No, temptation is not from the corner. Temptation from within. Temptations from your heart. So what we need to do? We have to uproot. We have to uproot those evil desires first, then only we can delete the action of sin. Someone may be saying after confession or oh, today onwards, I will not commit any sin. Today, now onwards, I stopped sin and going back home. But if they are not ready to uproot, if they are not ready to pluck the desires, which is evil, it's difficult for them to stop sin because sin is very powerful. It's not easy to overcome sin. We can overcome sin only by uprooting and plucking the evil desires from our hearts. So, dear loving brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say to you, check your heart. Let us check our hearts. Have a self-examine of conscience. What type of desires that we keep within? There are good desires, there are evil desires. If I go on keeping evil desires, the result is evil. No doubt about it. And at the end of the day, I am sad. Why I am sad? Because of the evil desires. Even though God said, I planted you as a good seed, very good seed. But I can see a lot of weeds today. Not seed, weeds. Lot of weeds. Who planted it? Who planted? Only one answer. Evil. Evil planted the weeds among the good seeds. Loving people, let us together try to understand. It is not the action of sin is important. The most important thing to know what I am keeping in my heart, what I am entertaining in my heart, what I am taking out of pleasure in my heart. Let us try. Let us try to pluck it out. Let us try to uproot the weeds or the evil desires from our heart so that we can be away from sin and we can be a child of God. Let's pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your life in Christ. Bye.